إن الله يأمر بالعذل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم Dear respected brothers and sisters Today inshallah we're going to talk about hope We're going to talk about the most hopeful verse in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We have a lot of verses in the Quran that speak about uh, paradise, about Jannah and so many other verses speak about hellfire, about Jahannam but we have some verses in the Quran are considered to be the most hopeful ones the most hopeful verses speak about Allah's mercy and forgiveness for example and His generosity towards people one of them is the one that we're discussing today in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 84 in Surah Al-Isra قُلْ كُلٌ يَعْمَلُ عَلَى شَاكِلَتِهِ Everyone acts in their own way. This is the most hopeful verse in the Quran. How is how so? Let's try to understand this together. Imam Al Qurtubi rahimahullah ta'ala narrated that one time the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the companions of the Prophet, they sat down together and they decided to discuss the most hopeful verse in the Quran. They had four different opinions Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Uthman and Sayyidina Ali, each one mentioned one verse. The verse that Sayyidina Abu Bakr mentioned is in Surah Ghafir. He said, I recited the Quran from the beginning to the, er, to, the, to the end. And the most hopeful verse that I found in the Quran that gives me hope in Allah's mercy is Ghafir al-Dhanbi wa qabil al-Tawbi shadeed al-Iqab. What is this ayah saying? This ayah is saying, Allah is the oft forgiving the one who forgives sins. He is the one who forgives sins. وَقَابِلْ التوب. He is the one who accepts repentance, the most merciful. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, شَدِيدُ الْعِقَبَ But he also has severe punishment toward the criminals. The tawl and the most, he is the most powerful. So why do you think Sayyidina Abu Bakr thinks this ayah is the most hopeful? Because Allah Azza wa when he talked about his mercy, and his wrath, he mentioned his mercy before his wrath. Always Allah's mercy and forgiveness and generosity come before his wrath and his anger and his punishment, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the reflection that we need to have in our life. When we deal with people, we should always give mercy and forgiveness first before we start punishing people and taking actions if they make a mistake. The second opinion is the opinion of Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. He said, the most hopeful verse that I have found in the entire Quran from the beginning to the end is نَبِّئْ عِبَادِي أَنِّي أَنَا الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ نَبِّئْ not أَخْبِرْ نَبِّئْ means give my servants the important news. It's going to make a huge, a huge change in, the, in their life. It's going to make a huge change in their life. نَبِّئْ عِبَادِي Tell my servants that indeed I am the most merciful, the oft forgiving. الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ And then after he finished that, he said عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَأَنَّ عَذَابِي هُوَ الْعَذَابُ الْأَلِيمُ And also tell my servants that indeed my punishment is the severe punishment. So again, Sayyidina Uthman looked for, at it from the same angle that Allah is talking about his mercy first and then he talked about his wrath and his punishment. Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said, no. The most hopeful verse that I found in the Quran when I recited the Quran many times from the beginning to the end is قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say, O Prophet, O my servants who have transgressed the limits. You have gone over and beyond. You have done too much. You have committed too many mistakes. لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ When you committed so many mistakes, huh? لا تَقْنَطُوا do, do not ever despair of Allah's mercy. Always be hopeful in Allah's mercy. In Allah يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Because Allah is the one who forgives all sins. So these are three opinions. But Sayyidina Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه, may Allah be pleased with him, he told him, but I have another opinion. I think the most hopeful verse is the one that we're discussing today. قُلْ 
كل يعمل على شاكلته قل كل يعمل على شاكلته everyone acts in in his own way look at his understanding why is this verse the most helpful verse because شاكله العبد الذنب the way of the human being is to commit mistakes is to be ungrateful towards Allah and towards people but the way of Allah is forgiveness the way of Allah is when I make a mistake he accepts my repentance the way of Allah is to be generous towards me and that's why he's so hopeful in this verse Allah is going to act towards us according to who he is not because of who we are because of our sins Imam al-Baghawi rahmahullah ta'ala and al-Qurtubi and others if you look at their books of tafsir and see how they reflected in this ayah what does it mean that everyone acts in his, in, his, in his own way what does it mean when I say that or when Allah says that everyone acts in his own way we have different opinions when you analyze the books of tafsir the first book of tafsir I mean the first opinion is every person acts according to his nature how he was raised Allah said وَالْبَلَدُ الطَّيِّبُ يَخْرُجُ نَبَاتُهُ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِ وَالَّذِي خَبُثَ لَا يَخْرُجُ إِلَّا نَكِدَ look when your parents foster you when you when they uh, uh, raise you up right they teach you something it's like they are planting a seed and that plant that's gonna come it come out of the of the, of the land is you Allah said وَالْبَلَدُ الطَّيِّبُ يَخْرُجُ نَبَاتُهُ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِ The fertile land produces abundantly by the will of its Lord. The fertile land. So if you have good manners, that means you have grown the way that your parents wanted and the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted. وَالَّذِي خَبُثْ لَا يَخْرُجُ إِلَّا نَكِدَ While the, the unfertile, while the infertile land hardly produces anything hardly produces anything so the way people act is based on the way they were raised based on their nature and the, the, the place that they came from the second opinion everyone acts according to his religion and that's a very strong opinion the believer will be merciful towards people he will not go and harm people cheat them and even kill them like some people do but the disbelievers they don't even believe in the hereafter they can go and you know invade other nations and they kill them and do whatever they want because nobody can control them, they act according to their belief. The third opinion is everyone acts according to his niyyah, his intention. As Rasulullah said, Al-A'malu bin niyat. Our actions are judged by our intentions. And whoever's intention is for Allah and His Messenger, He will be rewarded accordingly. But whoever's intention is to gain some worldly benefits, some worldly gains, or to marry a woman, or to do something else from the world, from this life of this world, he will be also rewarded accordingly or punished accordingly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fix our intention. Allahumma ameen. Ibn Ashur rahmahullah ta'ala said, Ashakila is when a person acts according to his culture and the group of people that he is a part of. This is very important to choose your group. As we said before in another episode, that when you choose your leader in this world, you're going to be following that leader on the day of judgment. When you choose your group in this world, you're going to be resurrected on the day of judgment with that group. As Allah said, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرًا The believers are going to be resurrected together, زُمَرًا, in one group because they used to be friends in this world. They will be also friends in the hereafter. Disbelievers and sinners and wrongdoers and the criminals also are going to be together. There's a huge difference between someone who is sitting now in front of me to watch an episode talking about Allah and His Messenger or attending a halaqa at the masjid, for example, at the mosque, and between someone who attends a concert in which, you know, people have uh, indecent songs or they have illicit relations with each other, right? So these people are going to be resurrected together. Everyone represents himself and everyone represents his culture but no one can represent Islam the only one who represents Islam is Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we make mistakes, we're not perfect do not ever judge my religion based on what I do based on what I say based on how I look like don't judge my religion based on that go back to the history of my prophet and judge the religion based on his character sallallahu alaihi wasallam he's the only raw model he's the only one who represents islam 
every other human being is infallible. Is infa I mean, is fallible. They make mistakes. Rasulullah is infallible. He never makes mistakes. He never commits sins. But every other human and every other Muslim is infallible. They make mistakes. They make mistakes. So if I see a sheikh, for example, or a speaker, or a very famous uh, imam, you know, whether he's a local imam or an international imam, we see him on TV, and then I found that that person did something wrong. There's a scandal going around, you know. Uh, people are talking about what he did. It doesn't mean that Islam is bad. It means that person is bad. So that's the meaning of قُلْ كُلٌّ يَعْمَلُ عَلَى شَكْلِتِ Everyone acts in his own way. Allah's way is forgiveness and mercy. Rasulullah's way is perfection in worshiping Allah. Rasulullah's way, Rasulullah Muhammad وسلم, the Prophet of Allah's way is perfection. To represent Allah's religion. Our way as believers is to commit sins and try to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah says, incredibly important ayah here. I mean part of the ayah. Very important. The only one who can judge people's hearts and intentions is Allah, not anybody else. I cannot judge someone because of how he is dressed, you know, the length of his beard for example, or his garments, or the way he speaks. I cannot judge him based on that. If somebody, for example, is committing a sin in front of me, doing something wrong, acting in a certain way, I cannot judge that person. I can judge the action, yes, not the person. Because the only one who knows the reality of people is Allah. Who said that? Allah said that. Allah said, فَرَبُّكُمْ Your Lord. He did not say, Allah. He did not say, Allah knows. He said, no, your Lord, the one who designed all of us, is the only one who knows, فَرَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنْ هُوَ أَهْدَى سَبِيلًا He's the only one who knows who is the most guided one. No one else knows, right? So do not judge people. Do not judge, judge the actions. But you cannot judge a person and say his final destination is Jahannam or his final destination is paradise because of what he did or because of what I think. Only Allah knows. Be careful. That's called ta'alli ala Allah Azza wa You're taking the position of Allah by judging humans. You're not a, you're not a God. If you compete with Allah Azza wa in His authority and try to judge people, Allah might punish you for this. Be careful. Allah Azza wa taught us. When we do da'wah, we say what? And I'm going to conclude with this, inshaAllah. This is the action item here. When I do da'wah, I have to humble myself. I believe in the truth that I have. It's the absolute truth. And I believe other than Islam is not the truth. But I still have to be humble. Allah told us to say, وَإِنَّ أَوْ لَعَلَى هُدًا أَوْ فِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ قُلْ لَا تُسْأَلُونَ عَمَّا أَجْرَمْنَا وَلَا نُسْأَلُ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ We do crimes, you do actions. Listen to this. Allah said, Certainly, one of our two groups is rightly guided. Look at how humble Muslims are in their approach. The other is clearly astray. Say, you will not be accountable for our misdeeds and we will not be accountable for your deeds. Look how hum humble the believer is when he does da'wah. We'll stop here inshallah ta'ala. Wa jazakallah khayran. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون